The next 50 years of your life are gonna go by whether you do something meaningful or not. Don't let yourself become 100 years old looking back and saying, if only I had, or what if I had just. Yeah. Those to me are the scariest. That's what drives me as much as my kids and like providing for them and my husband and like us living this life of our, that we want. The, the nightmare drives me just as much as the dream. Hey everyone, this episode is brought to you by Start Your Preschool. Hey, wait a sec, that's my book. Inside of it, I share my story, how I started a successful preschool in my home to be able to stay home with my young kids and create a full-time income. I also share my exact step-by-step -step tips on how you can get your preschool started as well. I actually wanna ship you a free copy of this book. To get it, simply go to freepreschoolbook.com or click the link in the description and we'll get you sent one right away. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Stronger Together Summit. I'm Joy Anderson, founder of the Bring the Mothers Home movement. Today I'm here with my good friend, Jamie Cross. She's going to teach us how to identify our mission so we can rise, run, and become her. Jamie, welcome to the summit. Thank you, Joy. You're awesome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, so tell me, why are you so passionate about helping mothers? Yes. So, um, you know, we just celebrated nine and a half years in business. Um, so we've been around for a little while, but I was in corporate banking, doing all the corporate things, making really good money. And um, I came home from corporate to be a stay at home mom and two years into full time motherhood. I really found myself in that place that I think so many moms find themselves. I was lacking vision outside of parenting and, you know, moms need to know that there's so much more than motherhood that you can do it all. You can have, you know, children, you can be raising a family, you can be building a business, you can be supporting your husband, all the things. And um, so I, I was just in this place that we weren't really meeting all of our bills. My husband was a full-time teacher, not making great money. So there was the financial aspect, you know, the, all of my physical circumstances, but in, inside there was turmoil because I longed for, I longed to build something and create something and I knew that I was supposed to do something. And so um, after, you know, in my whole journey, it's been like, man, how can I teach moms now to do what I did and change their, their entire financial circumstance? Which is the big thing. If you can fix the money problem, then it unlocks all these other opportunities in life and we all have a calling and if we can't afford to pay our bills how are we going to really change the world you know absolutely absolutely now you started in soap correct so how did this bridge like tell me about the soap and then how it eventually bridged into this empire that you're building right now yeah well that's where the the empire starts with being faithful with the little things and mm -hmm. Um, part of my story and you know I've told it so many times I'm like I'm sure you guys have all heard my story but after I prayed and asked God for a billion dollar idea I went to church and our pastor stopped the sermon and um, you know just put his hands on his heart and said this is never happening before but God just spoke to my heart and said there's a stay-at-home mom who he wants to give a billion dollar idea to so get ready for it and after that I had a dream and I saw this business blueprint and saw myself pouring all these oils. And um, and so when I, I woke up, told my husband, I'm gonna start a skincare company, it was like, well, how do I formulate a product? I have no <laughs> idea. I failed chemistry in high school. I had, I barely graduated high school, you know? And, um, and so, so it starts with the little things. And for, for me, it was a bar of soap and success and becoming and the dream it never starts with the stage it doesn't start with millions in the bank it starts with figuring out how to make a bar of soap and so when you're faithful with the little things you can be entrusted with more and more and more and more and that's been my nine and a half year journey now of just going from trial and error to trial and error and failing forward and figuring things out and um and just breakthrough after breakthrough but that is that is ultimately the process you know, fail forward. And well, and to be faithful in the little things, that is so key because you didn't step into day one and say, awesome, let's go start this like gigantic thing and I'm gonna go hire a hundred employees right now or anything, right? It was like, right. let's do the next right thing. Let's figure out that first step. 
Yes. Well, and here's the thing. So even when I talk to young entrepreneurs now and they're like, I need to get capital. I'm like, no. As a matter of fact, the process of figuring out how to become profitable is what makes you a qualified entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I hadn't really figured out how to do, how to like make that first dollar and then how to multiply the dollar and then how to expand on what I had built, I tell you what, if I had to do now, what if I had to do then, nine years ago, what I'm doing now, I would have completely, like it would have fallen through my fingers and slipped mm -hmm. through the cracks all, cracks, all of it. But the process of failing and the process of being faithful is what qualifies you for the next thing, you know? And so don't, don't bypass that process of figuring out how to do the thing, how to, how to get your breakthrough. That's, you know, when I talk about becoming, I'm like, it's not about all, all these external things. It's not always about just, you know, sure. I, I learned how to make soap. I learned how to formulate products. I learned how to create marketing strategies, how to sell stuff, how to do all the things. But ultimately that process of um, cracking codes and solving problems is what what gave me my internal wherewithal to handle now a giant team and millions of dollars and you know and the direction that we're going it's like I'm prepared to handle the greater things now because I was faithful with with the smallest with the one dollar and the one product you know I love that. So can you share where your vision is going right now so we can have kind of the full picture of Jamie Cross and then I want to dive deep into this whole concept of becoming her. So we've talked about your beginning with your soap and growing it into um, a massive soap company but you've got becoming her which we'll touch, touch on in just a second but there's something else going on with your soap right now like tell me what the next step is for all of this. Yeah, so I'm gonna go into some story here. Love as it. I care, but um, you know, so in the last two and a half years, we've done so we went from farmers markets, you know, wholesale retail, doing low, you know, like farmers markets, and we went from zero to now in two and a half years, we've done over seven million in our business, and so we've that's kind of where our business is at currently. And um, last year, I was starting to feel really restless, which kind of disturbed me because I'm like, man, we're doing millions of dollars a year. We finally, like my husband and I work together full time. He's our operations in our COO. And we're traveling and we're taking our kids places and like we're doing this great dream thing that we've always dreamt about. Why am I feeling so dissatisfied? And, um, you know, for, for nine years, eight and a half years from the time I started my company, I had mentors and pastors and teachers and friends tell me, Jamie, you should start a multi-level marketing company. And Nathan and I spent 10 years in that world and in that industry. And I was like, no way. <laughs> I will never do that. I will not associate myself with that industry. I don't believe in it. I believe mm -hmm. that it's driven by cult leaders and <laughs> people. And, um, and so last year I was feeling super restless and I was like, man, what's wrong with me? I'm, I can't possibly be dissatisfied. Like, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm not, not yeah. trying to be whatever, <laughs> just yeah. here. but I really, I really, um, dove into that. And I would encourage anyone who start, you know, maybe you're in a season that feels like, man, I, I've kind of made it, which of course we never have. There's always more mm -hmm. really pay attention to that restlessness. Cause it usually means you have another breakthrough. Just you have to tap into yeah and so um i was like okay god you've got my attention what's going on in my heart here what do you have next and of course i asked him for a billion dollar idea and the facebook google strategy is as a million dollar business model but it's not a billion dollar business yeah. model and i felt so prompted I, I heard him speak to my heart and he said jamie start doing your research and after all those years of being told you should start a multi-level. I knew exactly what he meant. I was like, okay, God, <laughs> we're diving into the data here. And what I discovered was so fascinating. Um, there's a, there's a, um, a billionaire who's written a book about network marketing, all the mistakes that people have made and the leaders have made and the industry has made, mm. but how the industry and the business model itself is so pure and so powerful because everybody can win. And as I was flipping through this book, in my research process, I came to a page that said, here's all the mistakes, all these, you know, that this industry has made for the last hundred years, you know, cult, cult leaders, 
people who've never been trained in leadership, people who don't have professionalism and business acumen, controlling, you know, mm -hmm. all the things that we usually associate, you know, the stigma. Yeah. And I came to a page where he said, the business model in and of itself is pure, but people have come along and really messed it up. But mm -hmm. if there was a leader who came along and could restore this industry back to its original form, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it would be a force on the earth. And I read that and I was like, I can say yes to that. Like, and so if I could sum up everything that we're doing now, it's not soap. I mean, soap is the vehicle that we're using, but we are building people and there's restoration happening in the, you know, in the in, in industry. And we are taking on a really big, a beast of a, pro a project here by saying and claiming we're going to restore this entire industry, but we're seeing it happen. I've created a training system and a mentorship program and, um, and we've got products that work and we're actually helping people develop business acumen. And we've been in pre-launch for now for six months. We've got almost 4,000 ambassadors ready to go and almost 5,000 people in our Facebook group. And so my goal is like, how do we help people fix the money problem and activate people together so that they can discover what they were born to do and go out and do it. And what's amazing, Joy, is you know, like there's a, sometimes a stigma around making money. And I'm like, I tell you what, the more I have, the less I think about it. Uh -huh. The conversations Nathan and I are having right now are go have gone three years ago from how are we going to pay our, our bills or, yeah. you know, I, having a, not having an unlimited grocery budget, like the basic things to now, what country do we want to buy an orphanage in? You know, those kinds wow. of conversations. And so I believe everybody has that potential. And we've seen all the memes out there, the potential, it's not enough to have the potential. It's not enough to have the dream. You have to be a fierce action taker. And so that's where we can really dive into becoming her. But um, so here we are about, we're a couple weeks away from launching our, our network marketing company, our transitioning our current nine and a half year old business into yeah. a network marketing company. And it's been the craziest, wildest ride, but I'm like, holy cow, we are in for We've got the perfect storm, everything going on in the world. People need mm -hmm. solutions. Yep. People who maybe were open five weeks ago are now like, I I need this. Yeah. And I'm like, we have the answer and we have we're giving people hope. And we're not just blowing fairy dust and unicorns at people. Yeah. We're like, I'm actually ta we're taking the time to go deep and, and build the training system and create the mentors and train the mentors yeah. and get people equipped. Oh, I love that. Okay, so if anyone's listening right now, our mothers are listening. We've got Jamie, who went from you and I, really, from farmer's markets and didn't have like any idea of how to grow a million dollar business, right? But grew into it over time with the little things, yeah? And as you were um, faithful with the little things, God gave you more, God gave you more instructions on the next step, the next steps, the knowledge, the confidence to the ability to step into those roles. Was it scary though? Has it been scary? No, it hasn't. I Because, well, no, it's never scary. Okay. What it is, is I heard, <laughs> here's the scary part. It's never the outside stuff. I remember a good friend of mine who is like, she's a, a big time executive, she's working with financial firms she said Jamie the hardest thing you'll ever do in business is develop a backbone that's the scary thing is when you have to annihilate annihilate the girl that was building what she was building yesterday right. and say the girl that's got me that here isn't gonna get me there and so when you have to analyze and assess yourself and say man here's the areas I need to grow here's the areas I'm making mistakes and then to change and evolve and grow as a person. I tell you what, so the answer is yes. It's that part sometimes is yeah. scary, but um, but it's worth it. There's always a price to pay for a prize, always. I love that. There's always a price to pay for a prize. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that part is scary, but doing what we're doing, like building what we're building, mm -hmm. man, I feel like I feel more equipped and ready for anything than I've ever felt or been. And people don't have to do this on their own. That's the thing. Like if you're doing it on your own, I can see how you might feel scared if you're the only person to solve every single problem that you don't know the answers to, but we're not in it alone, right? Yes. Oh my, I'm glad you said that. Here's the beautiful thing. And this is where I want to always challenge moms to look at the life you're, you've got right now 
and think to yourself, man, how do I really want to live? For me, it was like, I want my home, my children homeschooled, but I'm not a teacher. I tried for one hour to teach them how to tell time. And I was like, nope, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> so we have a, you know, we have a tutor that comes in 12 hours a week and that's all they do for school. Mm -hmm. We do schooling and adventures and they're involved in the business. I have help, you know, with kids and food and uh, grocery shopping. Like there's not a lot of day-to-day -day personal things that I, I get to focus now my attention on my kids. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't remember what brought me to saying that, but um, you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to do it on your own. And I have help. And, and anytime there's been a gap, um, there's, there's an ancient proverb. And if you don't, I, I'm going to bring my faith into this a little bit, yeah. but there's a, a, a verse that says that um, God's going to supply all of our needs according to his glorious riches. And I've always stood firm on that. I'm like, Lord, you gave me this idea. This is ultimately yours. I'm just a steward of it. You know what we need, but I'm going to tell you, like, God, I need, I need a CEO or a husband does that, but like, I need this person or this administrative person and be so faithful mm -hmm. to provide all of our needs. And, and that's team and um, yeah. coming alongside in, in the home and helping the home. And so um, don't ever be afraid of, of the price that you have to pay for the dream because the provision will always be there. Yeah, absolutely. And people will hear your passion and your mission and rally around you to support you. And I guarantee that's what happened with you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes you're, uh, there's a funny video on YouTube and it's about the leader, like the weird, weird guy dancing, like he's all by himself. <laughs> like for a while there, he's the only guy and he kind of looks like the weirdo and that's sometimes what it feels like to be an entrepreneur is like, I know guys, I said, I'm like at this little sub company and I'm going to build a billion dollar. Yeah, Jamie, you're going to build a billion dollar industry business. But um, yeah, eventually people join you. If you're just yeah. faithful, just stay yeah. strong, stay consistent. And um, I feel like my job is to awaken the dreamer, you know? So let's talk about that. I mean, your company, MIG started yes in soap, but it grew into obviously so much more and we're not talking the multi-level necessarily only aspect of it. We're talking this other underlying foundational level of becoming her. And you discovered something along the way through your soap company that like you could actually empower women, inspire them. Like tell us about that journey of what this other thing you discovered. Yeah. So it's funny cause I see people like, um, I want to be a public speaker. I'm like, well, what are you going to speak on? go produce results, like bear some fruit in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to give people, that's what's going to give you the authority to lead people is by just becoming and doing and bearing fruit. And, um, and whether it's raising amazing children or creating a financial, you know, beast of a business, whatever the case may be, um, I can't, I can't ever, I, I'm like a broken record about becoming, I'm like, man, pay the price, figure it out what you want, awaken the dreamer, you know, take some time and um, sit down and remember the things that you've shut down inside yourself because you're like, oh, that doesn't fit the mold or I can't do that because I'm, I've got kids now or, you know, maybe you've got this sort of broken history. Maybe your story is really um, broken, but man, it's never too late and there's, ne you're, it's, there's never a story that's too broken. It's like, I always say, come as you are, but don't stay there. So come into this dream world, into this whole idea of creating a life that you were born to live and serving the people you were born to serve. You know, come into it as you are, but man, don't stay there. Pay the price and, um, and you know, get the mentor. Surround yourself with people that, that do believe in you. Have boundaries. Have boundaries with anything that is a leak in your life. I'm so fierce about boundaries with women because I, I look at their, I look, I have a lot of, you know, I talk to women all the time. I'm like, man, you would probably be leaps ahead in your life if you didn't have all these dreams in your, that you've let, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's family or friends or people in your job, like just build a little, <laughs> build a moat around yourself or something. And, yeah. And, um, and surround yourself with good people that believe in you. That's so critical. Have good mentors. Mm -hmm. 
So you mentioned boundaries. What are some boundaries um, besides like surrounding ourselves with a moat? Like what are specific boundaries you can think of? Like if mothers did this, it would really help you. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> it's it's kind of a touchy top topic too, but I see a lot of ladies letting their parents dictate their life and they're adults now. And I'm like, man, have boundaries with your parents. Don't let them come in and tell you how to raise your kids. <laughs> Live your life, you know, figure out what you want and go out and get it and get after it. And I've had seasons, many seasons where I've had to distance myself from people mm -hmm. because they, um, and you know, manipulation is a big problem in, in friends and family and, and people that like, whenever you start feeling guilty about something, I'm like, Oh, who are the people in your life? that are potentially feeding this guilt. Because, uh, you know, I, 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 I've recognized that that's a lot of it. A lot of times is like friends or family or people saying, well, why are you doing it like that? Or right. well, it shouldn't be blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, heck no, like you've got to be so strong in the direction that you're going, get really anchored in your purpose and your why. Mm -hmm. And that will allow you to fight. It's, it's funny because, um, there is much, just as much energy in taking territory as there is defending it. So as you grow, as you build, and you start to change, the people in your life who aren't changing along and growing along with yeah. you are going to try to bring you back. Mm -hmm. What you have to do, you're like, no, I just too, took two steps forward. I'm going to defend this territory, and you're either coming with me or you can't be in my life anymore. Yeah. No, love your distance. And right. I can't say that enough, and I, I'm fierce about it because I'm like, the wrong people in your life can can hinder your destiny. Don't let that happen. Defend, yeah. and build, and move forward, and then defend that territory. I mean, I've got all these trademarks in my business now. I'm like, holy cow! I've spent I spent thousands of dollars getting trademarks, and then thousands of dollars defending our trademarks. You know, mm -hmm. you got to defend what you build. I love that. And when you started your soap company, you also started doing something really impressive with emails. I mean, most people would be like, hey, you want to know this cool thing about soap? It does this business. <laughs> Come get it, right? But like, your emails are completely different. How did that even, like, tell us what they are, first of all. And then how did you even have that concept to, like, do it that way? Yeah, because um, one thing, it's funny, because very early on in my soap career, <laughs> I'm like, my, my trade is I'm a soap maker. That's what I do, you yeah. know? Um, but in the very beginning stages of the farmer's markets, there were people who would send spies to my table, like other skincare companies at the market, they would send, <laughs> send, send spies to my table, they would be hacking my, my offers and my products and my pitch and everything. Hmm. I had to get really aggressive about knowing who I was and knowing what I stood for in business. And so I've always been asking myself this question, what do people want and what problems am I solving? And people don't necessarily care about clean skin. They don't even always necessarily care about beauty as much as they care about, you know, what's going on on the, like the soul aspect of a woman. I care so much about, about the women that we serve. I, I care about her soul. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm talking about life stuff. I'm talking about things that are are real things that can help her go from where she is currently to seeing, hey, there's a breakthrough right, right ahead of you. And sure, go ahead and buy some of our soap, but ultimately we care about you as a person. And so story selling and storytelling is a really big part of our, of our, you know, culture because what better way to change the world than to tell stories? And to change it one woman at a time, too. Yes, and um, and I feel like there's no, when you, when you take your business from a product business, because ultimately, if you get past selling a product, mm -hmm. you'll become unstoppable. Yeah. When you, when you start looking at the person as a whole, and so when we went from farmer's markets to, and even then, when I was like little farmer's markets girl, whenever I would get an order online, um, I would write handwritten letters and, and just thank people and I would always want to move them and touch them on a yeah. deep soul level. But um, uh, I was going to say something and I totally lost my train of thought. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, storytelling and um, 
yeah, getting past the product and really getting to the heart. Because when you have a when you have a message to share with the world, really, it doesn't matter what you're selling. People are people, and mm-hmm. business is always a people business. It doesn't matter if you're online or in brick and mortar. We're ultimately talking to, selling to, serving people, and when you can speak that language, the language of your audience, then you can't go wrong. Yeah. And truly caring for the person. I mean, it's not just, there you go, but you literally are trying to empower that person that you're delivering soap to. (laughs) Yes. It's amazing. Yes. It's all about activation, activating people. I love that. I've actually heard that word more frequently in the past couple weeks than I've ever heard it before, activating what is inside of you. And so this is like perfect. Um, There's a motto in your company. It starts with the word seed. Do you want to share that motto? Oh yes, seed to skin, skin to soul. (laughs) Where did that, I know like we've talked a little bit about it, but like how'd you come up with that? So, you know, from seed to skin is of course we are growing, we all of our products are made from raw plant-based material or honey, raw honey or beeswax. Um, And then seed to soul, I'm sorry, seed to skin, that's of course the meaning behind that. And then skin to soul is that's really where the power is at. Like if we can, (laughs) it's all about the soul. It's all about who are you created to be and how can we empower you and activate you to become that and give you the tools, everything that we're doing with the Her Effect is like, how can we equip women to take action and change her life circumstances from a practical standpoint? And what I love about what we're doing now is like Nathan and I have been doing Monday morning trainings together Mm -hmm. Um, and we've been talking about like belief and confidence and things that like how do you develop yourself and as a person as a leader as a woman um, my husband's got so much wisdom and then of course we've got field experts coming and talking about nuts and bolts but um, I believe we've lost the art of discipleship and mentorship in our society and I'm like we're training people now we're rolling up our sleeves and we're getting in there and the nitty-gritty with people and and um, a lot of people have come into this industry with PTSD and you know abusive leadership situations and it's like we're here to to be with people and to walk alongside them and to see the best in them and to empower them to see the best in themselves and then go after it, go after their life, take their life by storm. That's what, that's what everybody needs to do. I love that. Take your life by storm. <laughs> yes. And you're trying to reshape the entire industry as well of multi-level marketing. Yeah. The, and the only way to do that is to build people because MLM, like the business model is an inanimate, you know, it's what it is. It's like yeah. it's a great business model. But when you start throwing the people thing in there, and I think it's going to get messier before it gets better. Sure. And so, like all this training and professionalism, and we've got a lot, a lot of really incredible women, incredible experts and leaders who've come into this movement and joined us. And yeah. um, we're all rolling up our sleeves and just meeting people where they're at. And and you know, it's just it's it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So what is possible when one woman changes her outlook on life, changes her desires, her dreams, steps into who she fully is? What is possible at that point? Yeah, I almost look at your life like this container. And once you start filling it with the good stuff, you know, like you're, you're, you're mixing this whole thing together that is your life to build this beautiful concoction. And when you start to see um, and, and take seriously the dream, because everybody was born with something, some kind of spark, something yeah. that makes you come alive. Um, one of my quotes in the Her Effect is whatever it is that makes you come alive, do it with all your heart. And when you do, you'll find us in the are- in the arena with you wiping the dirt off and slapping you on the butt saying go girl you were made for such a time as this (laughs) so when you realize like what is it that makes you come alive you got to do it um i was talking about this the other day i remember i kind of went through a two-year death season i think every great story has a death season like many women probably joy you've been through this like you go through a desert desert phase where you're like what am i doing and Mm -hmm. nothing's working and i'm i feel so like 
like just alone, you know? And um, I remember reading Joanna Gaines's book in that time. It was a very, like they had just launched their first book and I was reading through her, um, through her book and it was really fascinating because she's like, she was starting to grow her boutique. She was putting money aside and then she felt really prompted to, to give it up for a season and come home and be with her family. And now look at what hap- is happening. Yeah. And, um, but look at, look at what she did. Like she just was faithful with her little boutique. And I, I guarantee you when you start to, when you start to awaken unto life, like what does it really look like to live a real life? It's not about just, you know, the mundane, like taking joy in everything and, and making the most of every opportunity and building a life that you that is worthy. There's a there's a great scripture that says, live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Everyone's received a calling. Live a life worthy of that. Like don't throw your life away. Mm-hmm. And dream is at the foundation. Without a vision, the people perish. Mm-hmm. And so many people are perishing, but take that dream, that vision seriously and then get after it. And when you start to just it's hard to be like, you know, and we kind of over glorified this idea of like building the dream. Sometimes it's just like, hey, I just need to fix the money problem. Yeah. And sometimes doing some of the practical things puts you in a position where you now you have choices. Now you can start like maybe going back to school to study whatever, which I'm not yeah. a big fan of college, but <laughs> study herbalism or study, yeah. you know, art or whatever it is. Like, I don't know. There's so many ways to build your life. Yeah. But um, but you have a, a you have a purpose, you have a calling, and just start somewhere. Start being faithful, even with your kids, you know, with your family as a mom. Be faithful with your children, you know. And I love that. We were talking earlier, and your goal too with with mothers here is to empower them so that they can raise up the leaders. Um, talk, talk about your favorite book. Oh yes, so there's a book called Shepherding a Child's Heart that is so powerful because, you know, I think a lot of times mothers just struggle with like, how do I train my child? How do I even, you know, a scary word sometimes in our society is discipline. How do I discipline my children? I'll tell you what, I was just talking to, I just was talking to somebody else, another entrepreneur about this. I'm like, if you over discipline and under love, then you've got really hard, broken children. Mm-hmm. If you under discipline and over love, you have spoiled children. <laughs> There's a balance between loving your children hard and then, you know, like in our family, it's lying, direct disobedience, and attitude problems. So, those three things, um, like uh, a w- award, that's not the there are no no's in your house, <laughs> um, yeah. So, and and we always give them the opportunity to change their own attitude, but those things will, um, and tattle you to discipline and so but we don't want to we don't want to address the behavior we want to shepherd their heart we want to get to the heart of the issue and so in that book it really talks about getting to the heart of the matter and then just coaching and shepherding your children at a heart level um because gosh what an entrustment we have as mothers to raise up the next generation and i know you're passionate about this joy and <laughs> everything that you're doing it's like the more and the, the older my children get, my oldest is 11, I'm like, holy cow, give them a foundation of who are they and what do they stand for and remind them and tell them every single day, you've probably heard this before, this isn't my quote, but tell them who they are every day or somebody else will. So give your children a solid, <laughs> um, it's funny, I love how you talk about like starting a preschool and um, my boys were really delayed in like societal academic like if you were sure. going to put them in public school they yeah. would have been considered delayed but yeah because my focus for the first six to eight years was okay yeah you can, you can read okay you can write okay but it's character hard work and how to think for yourself and Love so that. we've lost this idea like we've gotten so caught up in society's idea of oh my gosh my children are behind i'm like they're kids <laughs> they are children if they, like my kids do three hours of school a day, uh, four days a week, you know, yeah. and, and that's it. And I'm probably going to cut it back even a little bit because, mm-hmm. um, but my 11 year old knows how to go knock on doors and sell soap and he knows how to be a salesperson. He knows yeah. how to come up with ideas and take mm-hmm. action and make an idea come to life. You know, he's got, he's done these woodworking projects and my other 
my two younger, you know. So we have such an opportunity to equip our children for life yeah. as adults. And I would encourage moms to start thinking about like, I'm always looking at my kids, like what's their natural bent? What makes them come alive? Because mm -hmm. I don't want them to be 18 graduating and then going through, you know, at 26 years old, now they're trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. By the time they're 18 and ready to leave, they should have already been an understudy and some kind of, um, that's, that's kind of like old school, you know, like there, my kids will be some kind of, um, they'll have a trade yeah, that they don't yeah. have to do with money yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, once they know how to fix the money problem, then it's like, Hey, what is it that you really want to do? And yeah. hopefully up into that before they leave home. And that's my job to help them crack that code, you know, and all yeah. of us as mothers, don't just send your kids off to school and let them do homework and waste their entire childhood, not helping them develop their, their work ethic, their character and their abilities and their strengths and their, and their potential skill sets. That's amazing. I love all of that. So we've talked not only about like how to empower women to step into their role, but how to nurture your children and help them to step into their role. Um, you have these really cool phrases that you say all the time and they have the words her in all of them. And I was like, how in the world did she literally do that? I've seen your phrases and I'm like, there's no way, like I would never have come up with all of those. And I love it. Would you mind sharing those? Because they're so cool. They go in hand in hand, I suppose, with the her effect, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, there's, I have a list of over like 200, some of them. Oh, no way. <laughs> I've only seen yeah. probably like eight or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, ambassador and, um, are you, is that what you're talking about? So like, like yeah, like so sister, right? And then oh, yeah. instead of, yeah, you put H-E-R at the end. So it's like sister her, you know, like and you keep yeah. her as this focus of the words mother, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, um, I developed the seven pillars of a woman and they have all have the word her. So it's mother, sister, entrepreneur, um, lover, which is, you know, all the, um, so sister is friendship. Every woman was created to give and receive deep, meaningful friendship and loyalty and, um, take care of your friends. I love to, my friends and I, um, write letters to each other. We send each other gifts. We do 90s. We always say, you want to call 90 style? <laughs> we get off the and we just do a phone call, you know? Yeah. Um, so sister, mother is obviously parenting. Um, nurture her, which is the aspect of a woman that's a life giver. She mm -hmm. takes a pot of soil, turns it into a garden. She takes a house, she turns it into a home. Yeah. There's lover, which is marriage and sex. There's um, entrepreneur, business and finance. And then there's supernatural, and that's the spiritual aspect of a woman, grace and strength and wisdom and you know your faith mm -hmm. and then there is the last one which is was that five or six i was losing a little bit of count <laughs> there's one so good. her true beauty or beautiful her which is the physical um the physical body of a woman the physical yeah. nature like take work out mm -hmm. you know drink yeah. your smoothies do your juicing yeah take care of your skin take care of your hair like mm -hmm. take care of your body yeah nurture your, nurture your body and so mm -hmm. um so that's the seven pillars of i love that yeah and that's something that always stood out to me i mean you've got your shirt this is entrepreneur her you yeah. know and the her is like this big pink letters i just love it um because it does, it like calls into us that we are not just, you know, like, see, that's the thing. And I've heard this actually a lot in the last couple of weeks. Women tend to say the word just, right? And I've actually heard it from a lot of our speakers that say like, we hate the word just. Um, yeah. and I even just said it right there. Um, but sometimes women think they are just a mom or just a wife or just a woman or just this or that. And yet we are that and everything so much more that we haven't even fully embraced yet yes amen yes <laughs> sister it's true no that's the thing um yeah when we can eliminate the word just and, and recognize the power that we hold as feminine beings man mm -hmm. it's powerful yeah absolutely so what would you say to mothers who are watching this who maybe struggling with 
like taking that very first step, right? I mean, we've kind of talked about a lot of things here, but what would be one of the first things you would encourage these mothers to do to step into truly becoming her and embracing all that God has given her of, you know, talents and abilities and ideas? What's one of the very first things she can do? My recommendation is get some time alone, get quiet, maybe have some like really, music has so much power over the soul. Play some really like soothing and activating music and Mm -hmm. write your vision down and make it plain. And um, without any limitation of that's too big or that'll never happen or is that okay for me to even want that kind of thing. Write that down and then create an action plan and you know find somebody who has done what you want to do Mm -hmm. and who has gone where you want to go yeah and study them you know when I went into my research phase for network marketing I read every single book I could find on Mary Kay and the Amway guys and and I studied and studied and studied and and every little nugget I could find I'm like what mistakes did they make what did they do right? What are people saying about them or their industry or their product? Like, how can I take what's been done and, and innovate? Yeah. Um, and so there's, that's kind of where mentorship. And then when you're ready to hit go, don't underestimate the power of taking action. Action creates clarity and action cures fear. And so it's a little scary wow. when you go to expand. It's like you're jumping from one little ledge to the next one up. And so there is that like air time where you're like, holy cow, am I going to catch the next ledge or am I totally fall off the cliff? And you're not going to fall off the cliff. What's going to happen is you're going to be like, oh, I didn't do that quite right. Or that didn't work. I'm going to try it again. And then next time, like you you jump a little higher and you reach it and Mm. you'll be fine. But if Mm -hmm. you spend the next, the next 50 years of your life are going to go by, whether you do something meaningful or not don't let yourself become a hundred years old looking back and saying if only I had or what if I had just yeah those to me are the scariest that's what drives me as much as my kids and like providing for them and my husband and like us living this life of our that we want that the nightmare drives me just as much as the dream wow what if I don't what if I stay where I am right now and 20 years from now something that God had given me and entrusted me with he, yeah. he, he passed it off to somebody else because I didn't do it. Somebody's going to have to take that baton. I'm going to do it. And so figure out what that thing is. What's your baton and go run with it because it'll have to get passed off to the next guy if you don't, if you don't yeah. go out there and get it done. I love that. Oh, you. Oh, yeah. So and scary. then let us all rally and run with you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Join. You know, I love what you're doing. You're building a tribe. You're, you have a sisterhood. And um, I... I did a training here in Colorado with some of our leaders and I talked about the difference between friendship and sisterhood. Yeah. Because you don't have to be friends with your sisters. You don't have to be friends with the people that you're running in a tribe with. But when you're in a tribe, you've got each other's backs. You fierce, you love each other fiercely. That doesn't mean that you're buddy, buddy with all of them. Like to me, I'm like, be very selective about your friends. But if I join a tribe, I'm like, this means I've got your back now. Whether we talk to each other a lot or whether we're actually friends or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm now yeah. part of the sisterhood. Yeah. And uh, I love that you're doing that. And moms, more than anybody, it's a lonely journey being a mom. Mm-hmm. You combine that with entrepreneurship and it's like you're on an island somewhere. And then you mix together the whole kid thing. Like, wow, sometimes you can, you've got to get out of your own head. Yeah. Bye surrounding yourself with women that you're gathering what you're doing is so powerful i love what you're doing joy oh thank you so much that means a lot it means so much um and seeing your entire journey i think moms everywhere are just going to be blown away seeing your entire journey from the farmers markets to where you're now but it's because you were entrusted with that small thing and you were faithful with it and you kept moving forward so never judge someone else's finish line by your starting line just your starting line is yours own it keep taking steps and eventually your finish line will be but we don't even have finish lines it's never over (laughs) i love that you're absolutely right well said that's great (laughs) if you're loving these videos would you do me a quick favor click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell to be notified every time a new video drops 
Also, be sure to comment, like, and share these videos. My mission is to share this message with as many women as possible, and you can help us with that as well.